In this video, we're going to walk through a example problem for calculating molar solubility from a solubility product. Uh, so we're going to look at lead to chloride, which was our uh, example we were just talking about. Um, and our goal, excuse me, goal is to create our um, to calculate our molar solubility. This is going to be in pure water at 25 degrees Celsius. I'm going to move my talking head up here and cover that up now. Uh, so we need a little bit more information. One of the things that we're going to need is the actual KSP or the solubility product of our um, lead chloride. And this is a piece of information that would have to be given to you. We would have to look it up in a table possibly um, if we didn't have it. So um, the, the KSP is equal to 1.6 times 10 to the negative fifth. And the reaction that we're looking at again is uh, lead chloride, PbCl2, which is a solid, um, and the equilibrium of that solid dissolving and recrystallizing. So that gives us lead plus two, which will be aqueous, and two of our chloride ions. And that's coming from that molar ratio right here. So we'll set up our equation um, as well. Actually, first we're gonna do, sorry. First we're gonna do an ice table before we just plug into an equation. Uh, so our ice table, if you remember from equilibrium problems, we know initially we're going to have a certain amount of our wood chloride and that amount doesn't necessarily matter because we're not going to include it in our actual calculation using our equilibrium constant expression. Uh, so what is important is the concentration of the lead ions and the chloride ions. So as we put this solid into water, there'll be none of that initially. And then we'll start to have some ions dissolve. And so we'll see uh, plus x for our lead because we have a one um, coefficient in front of it and plus 2x for our chloride ions, because for every one lead ion that dissolves, we'll have two chloride ions coming from the mole ratio between our lead and chlorine in our ionic compound. So at equilibrium, I'll have x and 2x. And you might see in other textbooks, this um, x equal lowercase s or uppercase s for molar solubility. Uh, this x is our molar solubility that we're trying to calculate. So let's go back to our equilibrium constant expression that KSP is equal to the concentration of lead ions times the concentration of chloride ions squared. And again, that squared is coming from the two coefficient in front of our chloride ions. So I can start plugging in for our equilibrium values. I know that KSP, that solubility product, is 1.6 times 10 to the negative fifth. That's equal to x times 2x squared. So if I, I distribute this squared out and I multiply this x by, um, or multiply my two or variables there. I'm going to end up with 1.6 times 10 to the negative fifth is equal to 4x cubed. And so here, now all I have to do is solve for x. So x is going to be equal to the cube root of our KSP divided by 4. So that's going to be our 1.6 times 10 to the negative fifth divided by 4. If I plug that into my calculator, I'm going to get a value that is 1.58 times 10 to the negative 2. And my units on this are going to be molarity. And that is how you calculate your solubility product. Or sorry, not our solubility product, our molar solubility. Uh, the one word difference between the two apparently it's getting my brain today. So that's an ice table followed by an algebraic, uh, solving an algebraic expression. Now I'd shown you earlier that we have a, a generic formula for this and it's really going to be this piece right here. So if we 
if we pull out our actual variables there, that KSP, that X, or that molar solubility was equal to the cube root of KSP divided by four. And this four is equal to, let me pull it up. That four is coming from our, we've got a one value here in front of our lead and a two in front of our chloride. These are our coefficients. And so this is our one to the one power times our two to the second power. Um, or the way we wrote this in our expression before, and that equals four, was uh, n to the n times m to the m, where this one here is our n and this two is our m. So they're coming from our coefficients. This three right here was our one plus two, that's our n plus m. And again, that n plus m are our coefficients. So we use those coefficient values uh, multiple times when we're actually, once we have this all rearranged to solve for molar solubility. And so we can actually just directly plug into this equation if we want, rather than go through the ice table. I personally always solve it with an ice table because I feel like I have practiced that skill so many times, I can really lean on it and feel comfortable with it. But if ice tables are still something that aren't very comfortable to you, you can use the equation. And so I'll put that up here again. So molar solubility is really the X value from our, our ice table, which is the molar solubility S. And that's gonna be equal to the root that is the sum of the coefficients and the solubility product divided by the coefficients to the exponent of the coefficient, which sounds weird, times the other coefficient to the exponent of the other coefficient. There's just not a good way to say that, unfortunately. Um, when you write it out, it's better. But it's really multiplying your coefficients when you raise them to the power that they are. Okay, and that's how you solve this problem. Here's that equation.